So that's our mutable model, and now we can lastly look at the actual GUI stuff, the part where we create a window and draw on it and handle the keyboard input. First off, the fill point function is what actually does our drawing within the window. The fill point function takes three parameters, G, point, and color. Point and color should be pretty self-explanatory. Point is a coordinate on our field, and color is an instance of the java.ot.color class representing some color. G, though, is short for graphics, as in graphics context. And if you've ever worked in a GUI toolkit like Swing, you'll know that a graphics context is basically an object which has methods which, when invoked, will draw within some designated surface, some surface area associated with the graphics context. Once we create our window, it'll become clear where this graphics context comes from, but for now, just take on faith that this graphics context has two functions we're using, set color and fill rect. Set color sets the active color on the graphics context, the color which it will use for its subsequent drawing operations, and then fill rect will draw a filled in rectangle. That's what it stands for. So in the function, first we need to take the point, the coordinate on the field, and translate it into a sequence of four elements, uh, an X pixel coordinate, a Y pixel coordinate, and then a pixel width and pixel height. So that's what point to screen rect returns, and using destructuring in this let form, we bind each of those values to x, y, width, and height. Then we invoke the set color method of the graphics context with the argument color. So we're setting the color to whatever is passed in as color. And then we invoke the fill rect method of the graphics context with the arguments x, y, width, and height. And that will draw a filled in rectangle of the currently set color starting at pixel coordinate x, y, and having the specified width and height. So that's our function which does the actual drawing. What we have next is the use of the macro def multi, which creates what Clojure calls a multi method. A multi method, in short, is a special kind of function which dispatches to some other function. So when we call the multi method, based on the arguments we pass in, it's going to dispatch to some other function. In truth, this is nothing we couldn't do with just ordinary functions, but as you'll see, particularly with more complicated examples, multi methods make this pattern more convenient. So in this case, the def multi macro is defined to the symbol paint, this fn form here, which takes two arguments, uh, ga graphics context and some other object. And then the dispatching function returns the value of the type keyword of the object. So object should be some sort of map object, which has a value for the key keyword type. And it's the value of this dispatching function, which determines which particular method we dispatch to with the same arguments. Those methods of the multi method we create with the def method macro. And so you see here we create two methods for paint. And notice that after the paint symbol, but before the parameter list, we specify a value. And if this value matches the value returned by the dispatch function, then this is the method which gets invoked. So the first method here is invoked when the type of the object is the keyword apple, and the second is invoked when the type of the object is the keyword snake. So in effect, when we invoke the multi-method passing in an object which is an apple, then we're painting an apple, but when we pass in a snake, then we're painting a snake. Looking at the first method, we use the structuring on the second parameter to bind the location and color of the apple to symbols of the same name, and then we invoke fill point with the arguments g, location, and color. So we're painting the single point specified by location in the color specified as color. And then in the second method, the one that paints snakes, using destructuring, we take from the object parameter the keys body and color. And then in the body, using the do seek macro, which is a macro that iterates through every element of the sequence body here and binds each element of the body sequence to point for each iteration. So effectively, we're iterating through all the points in the body and we're drawing them with the fill point function. In truth, this example probably makes multi methods seem like more trouble than they're worth. But in some more complicated examples, they can be very helpful. Anyway, moving on, next we have this game panel function, which returns a new J panel, which is where we actually draw our game. In Swing, a J panel is not a window itself, but it's an area within a window, which we can draw to and also uh, listen for events like keyboard key presses and mouse clicks and so forth. So first off, this game panel function takes three arguments, a J frame object, and then the other two parameters receive refs, which hold the current value of the snake and the current value of the apple. 
We haven't introduced proxy before. Uh, what it does in short is create a one-off Java instance. So rather than creating a whole Java class and then instantiate it, we just create a one-off instance of an effectively anonymous Java class. So a proxy form starts out with two vectors, the first of which specifies the class from which to inherit, and then zero or more interfaces to implement. So this proxy here, we're creating an instance that extends JPanel and implements the action listener and key listener interfaces. And then the second vector of proxy is where we specify arguments to the super constructor, to the JPanel constructor in this case, but we don't need to pass anything to the JPanel constructor, so our vector here is empty. After the two vectors, we then have methods, each in its own pair of parentheses. So first we have a method paint component that has one parameter, G, get preferred size with no parameters, then a method action performed with one parameter E, key pressed with a parameter E, key released with one parameter E, and key typed with one parameter E. Notice that the bodies of key released and key typed are both empty. The reason we have those methods included is because they are part of the key listener interface, and so we do have to include them even though our versions are not going to do anything. Anyway, looking at the first two methods here, paint component and get preferred size, these are methods of the JPanel class and we're overriding them in our subclass here, this proxy. Paint component is the method that gets invoked when Swing decides it needs to repaint this panel. A panel is a kind of component. And so Swing will provide G, the graphics context which we need to do the actual painting. So the first thing we do in paint component is use the proxy super macro to invoke the inherited version of paint component, the one we're overriding. And the reason we want to do this is because the inherited paint component will first blank out the whole panel. Every time we draw the new state of the game, we don't want the old state to be lingering around. The result would look totally wrong, of course. Uh, anyway, so after blanking out the canvas, we then use the paint multi method to paint the apple and then the snake. Get preferred size as a method invoked by Swing when it wants to determine how much space the panel needs, or how much space it wants, rather. There are cases where Swing will override the preferred size of a particular component. Uh, in this case, though, because our frame contains just one panel, and that's the entire panel, there aren't really any conflicts that'll arise, and so we'll, we'll get our preferred size. So get preferred size is expected to return a dimension object. We instantiate dimension here, again using this special syntax instead of the new special form. And the dimension constructor expects two arguments, a width and a height. Uh, the width here is the product of field width incremented by one multiplied by point size. And the height is field height incremented by one also multiplied by point size. So recall that our field width is 50, our field height is 30, and point size is 15. So our dimension will end up being 750 pixels wide and 450 pixels tall. The action performed method of the action listener interface, uh, as we'll see in a moment, is going to get invoked uh, every time our game needs to update. The parameter E receives an action performed event object, which we're not actually going to pay attention to. We're just going to ignore it. But it's a required parameter of this method, so that's why we include it. So in the method, first thing we do is invoke update positions, which recall updates to snake and apple refs. And then with the updated value of snake, we test if we have lost the game with the lose function. And if so, then we reset the game with the reset game function. And we invoke the static method show message dialog of the J option pane class, which simply displays a pop-up alert window here with the text you lose. Notice that we pass in the frame, the J frame, because a pop-up dialog has to be associated with an actual window. Pop-up dialogs are actually associated with a window. They're not their own free-floating windows. Anyway, if lose returns false, then well, maybe we won. So we invoke the win function to see if we've won. And if so, then again, we reset the game and we pop up a message dialog, but this one says you win. Lastly, because of all that, because the game state has updated, the repaint method doesn't immediately invoke paint component but it tells Swing that the component does need a repaint, and so Swing will invoke paint component in short order. Lastly, we have the methods of the key listener interface, and the only one we've implemented to do anything is key pressed. Again, it takes a parameter E representing the event, the key press event, and in this case, we actually care about the event object because what we're going to invoke is get key code method to return the key code of the key that was pressed. And we invoke our directions map as a function 
with the key code as argument. And so we're looking up in the directions map, we're looking up that key code to get the associated value, the direction vector. That vector is bound to the symbol direction by this let form. And then in the body of the let form, if direction is anything other than false or nil, which it will be if the key pressed was either left, right, up, or down, in which case we invoke update direction, passing in the snake ref and this new direction, the one that we got from the key code. So when key pressed is passed a key listener event with a key code of either up, down, left, or right, then we're going to update the direction of our snake. Finally, our last function game is the program kickoff. In the body, we have a let form in which we bind to snake a new ref with the value returned by create snake, and we bind to apple a new ref with the value returned from create apple. We bind to frame a new instance of JFrame to the constructor of which we pass a string snake, which is simply the title of the window. Then we bind to panel, the result of calling game panel. And lastly, we bind to timer, a new instance of the timer class to whose constructor we pass turn millisecond, which recall was the value 100, and this new panel. We then invoke two methods on this panel, set focusable with the argument true, and add key listener with the panel itself as argument. We want the panel to be focusable because without focus, a window component cannot receive key events. And when we add the panel itself as a key listener of the panel, then when key events happen on the panel when it has focus, they get dispatched to the panel. So when you have focus on the panel and you hit a key on the keyboard, then the key pressed method of our panel object gets invoked. Next on our frame object, we invoke four methods. First add, we're adding the panel to the frame. Without doing this, the panel wouldn't appear in our window. Having then added all the components of the frame, we then invoke pack, which will size and position the elements within the frame. Because newly created JFrames start out not visible, we need to call set visible. To ensure that all the threads used by swing get shut down when we close the window, we set the default close operation to exit on close, a static enumerated value of the JFrame class. And lastly, because once we create a frame, it starts out not visible, we need to set visible to true, otherwise the window won't show up. And then finally, very, very last thing, we need to start our timer with the start method. Once started, the timer will invoke the action performed method of our panel at regular intervals every 100 seconds. That's what a timer does. You pass in a number of milliseconds and some action listener object, and it will invoke its action performed method every number of milliseconds. So that's our kickoff game function, and we start our program by invoking game. Now, before we go, you may be wondering why we used refs in this program. Why did we store the snake and the apple in ref values instead of perhaps just say vars in the current namespace using the def form? That would have worked too. Well, if it were the case that say the methods which paint our panel and the methods which update the snake and apple, if they ran in separate threads, we would definitely want to use refs here. Without refs, our paint method might draw an inconsistent state of the game where, say, the snake has been updated after one move, but the apple has not. And if it were the case that, say, our action listener method, action performed, uh, which is triggered by the timer, and the key pressed method, which is triggered by uh, hitting keys, if those methods ran in separate threads, we would have a danger of inconsistent updates to the snake. You could have a scenario, say, where the user updates the direction of the snake by hitting a key, but if the action performed method is running concurrently, it might undo that update and so a change in the snake's direction could get inappropriately lost. By using refs, we can ensure that methods running in different threads can have consistent views of our snake and our apple. Now, it turns out that the way swing works is that these event handler methods, uh, paint component, get preferred size, action performed, key pressed, all of these methods we're using, they don't run in separate threads, they're all guaranteed to run in one thread. And so this program actually really doesn't need refs. It's good policy, however, when writing closure code to when dealing with global mutable state, like snake and apple here, to always just use refs by default. Because maybe you don't have any concurrency problems now, but going forward you might be introducing multi-threading into your program, and then you're going to want them. And then in certain cases with experience you'll recognize that, oh, I don't actually need a ref, maybe I need an atom, or maybe I need an agent. 